Hello everyone and welcome to a really enjoyable game uh, from the 1960 Mario uh, Plata tournament that was played in Argentina. Uh, it's Boris Pasky versus Robert James Fisher or, or Bobby Fisher. Uh, it is uh, their first encounter and uh, interestingly uh, Boris Pasky uh, arrived to Mario del Plata with David Bronstein. They were uh, uh, the only two Russian players or the only two Soviets that arrived for the tournament as the other uh, the other guys were pretty busy. Uh, Tal just won his World Chess Championship match against um, uh, Botvinnik and and, uh, well, uh, everyone's been doing their thing. Uh, but the, uh, here, um, uh, Spats uh, Spassky and Bronstein uh, arrived. And Spassky was around 23 years old. Bobby was 17 here. And when they were arriving, um, uh, you can see that today, uh, the, the quote above the board from David Bronstein's book says that they did not even know that Bobby was participating in the tournament. And even though Spassky never met Bobby, Bronstein uh, did... Um, uh, get to know Bobby because they played together in the Porto Rojo Interzonal in 1958, two years ago, you, you know, the the one that uh, got him invited in the uh, greatest candidate tournament uh, of all times, the 1959 candidates tournament. Uh, and uh, Fisher even um, uh, finished half a point, uh, half a point ahead of uh, David Bronstein. So it's a really fun game. Uh, you guys will enjoy it. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, and uh, let's all wish uh, Spassky uh, a great 85th birthday and many more to come. So Spassky with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. Uh, and yeah, of course, uh, interestingly, uh, when um, uh, Bronstein and Spassky arrived, Bobby was wave waving at them uh, from the train. Uh, and Bronstein uh, immediately uh, recognized Bobby and he introduced him to Spassky. And that's basically how, how the two of them uh, got, uh, got to know, know each other. And they've been uh, on really good terms uh, ever since. So here Spassky opens with e4. We have e5 by Fisher and now f4. Uh, Spassky goes for, for the king's gambit and Bobby happily accepts this with e captures on f4. Knight to f3 and now comes g5. So like in the old days, uh, the theory still stands uh, uh, much like uh, when when Anderson and uh, Morphy played it, uh, we have h4 and now g4, grabbing more space, chasing away the knight, knight to e5, and now knight to f6. So everything the same like in uh, the, the days of Anderson and Morphy. Uh, and now uh, there are three main replies here uh, for white after knight to f6. You could play bishop to c4, you could play d4, or you could play knight captures on g4. And uh, they're all very, very interesting. So we're just going to uh, show a couple of them. For example, if knight captures on g4, Knight captures on e4 is very nice, going after the g3 square. Now we chase away the knight, knight g3, and the bishop captures on f4. And now it's interesting that the rook cannot be captured if, uh, uh, or better yet, uh, queen e7 check first. And then after bishop to e2, uh, the rook can now uh, not be captured. If the rook is captured, the bishop f6, and now black just gets uh, destroyed. So what you would have to do is just continue the game. Let's say rook g8, you go after the knight, and now after the knight is captured, we're going to capture the knight and g4 and the game continues with a really really sharp game uh, for both sides so that's one of the options uh, like i said knight g4 the other very interesting one is bishop to c4 going after the f7 square right away uh, so d5 is pretty much forced and after e captures on d5 we just block the pawn with bishop to d6 and this is perfectly fine uh, for example d4 and both players castle castles castles and the game continues you can see that it's uh, incredibly sharp but uh, well uh, it, it, that is what you're looking for if you play the king gambit but okay after knight to f6 Spassky goes for d4 the third line that we are now going to uh, show we have d6 chasing away the knight and the knight to d3 as now the bishop uh, guards the g4 pawn as well so knight to d3 and here bobby captures on e4 we have knight captures on e4 now knight to g3 check could be very annoying so bishop captures on f4 removing the defender uh, of the g3 square and now bishop to g7 attacking the d4 pawn and while you could defend it with a move like pawn to c3 uh, that means you will have trouble developing your knight so Spassky uh, just plays knight to c3 as he says okay your knight on e4 is undefended uh, do something about that or if you capture on c3 then I'm gonna play b captures on c3 and my d4 pawn will be defended so this is what Fisher plays knight captures on c3 we have b captures on c3 and now Bobby strikes in the center with c5 and this is all very very good stuff you can see that Bobby did uh, quite a lot of work um, uh, even on the king's gambit as black uh, even though he's only 17 here 
uh, and now comes the bishop to e2, putting more pressure on the g4 pawn, and it's also as of move 11 that this position has never been reached again. So now it's a unique game, and now Bobby has to decide, does he capture on d4, or does he castle first and then capture on d4, because you want to capture on d4, it's just um, uh, a free pawn. So he does it, c captures on d4, but now Spassky just castles. Uh, and now capturing on c3 would be a little bit too dangerous. If, if he grabs another pawn, then we play bishop captures on g4. And now you have this, if bishop captures, queen captures, you have a lot of pressure on g7, so you'd probably castle. But then, for example, captures, captures, and you pick up the d6 pawn. You attack the rook, and if rook d8, even bishop e7. Uh, attacks the rook, rook d7, bishop f6, you, you can trade uh, the bishop here, and this bishop is a, a pretty important defender of the king side, so black would not enjoy uh, defending this. So instead, just knight to c6, Fisher has to continue developing pieces, and now we have bishop captures on g4. Uh, Bobby castles, and now bishop captures on c8, rook captures on c8, so you keep an eye on the d6 pawn, and now uh, queen to g4, putting pressure on the g-file, and now bishop to h6 would be very very, very good. If, if Spassky can play this, then the game uh, ends on the spot. So Bobby plays f5, he chases away the queen, also now all of the pieces can help out with the defense of the 7th rank. Uh, queen to g3 with a double attack on the d6 pawn, and now Bobby just captures on c3. So what do you play here? Well, Spassky just continues developing rook a to e1, playing this in great style uh, like the old masters would. Uh, we have king h8, Bobby unpins the king from the g file, and now prepares rook to g8 to put some pressure on white's king, uh, king side. So king h1, uh, you could go after the pawn first, but uh, bishop, uh, rook g8 and bishop to d4 are moves that will probably happen, so it makes sense to move the king away to a light square, and now rook to g8, threatening some nasty discoveries, but just bishop captures on d6. Pasky says you have no nasty discoveries, you can try whatever you want. So here Bobby plays bishop to f8, and this is in fact all all, all best moves. So both of them are pretty much playing the, uh, the best moves as Pasky playing some, uh, b b well, may maybe not all the top moves, but Fisher playing pretty much all the top moves. Uh, <laughs> and now uh, black is lost unless he plays bishop to e5 check. This is a move you have to play uh, because your bishop is hanging, your queen is hanging, so bishop e5 is a must. So here, bishop to e5 check, uh, Bobby captures the bishop, we have queen captures on e5, and now rook to g7. You could also play bishop to g7, but Bobby wants the rook to control the g file, uh, so he blocks uh, with the rook. We have rook captures on f5 now, uh, and queen captures on h4 with check. King to g1, and now queen to g4. Uh, you, you don't have bishop to c5 check because that square is sufficiently defended by Spassky's pieces. So queen g4, now Fisher is threatening checkmate with queen captures on g2, and Spassky moves the rook back. Rook f2, uh, defending the, uh, the g2 pawn. And now uh, it's... Uh, uh, well, it's it, it's a really a remarkable position where uh, even though it seems like you have something, uh, you really don't. Uh, this position has to be played very, very precisely. You have to play something like b6 or offer a queen trade with queen g5 or keep attacking but without uh, allowing your position to deteriorate. So here uh, Fisher continues attacking. He plays bishop to e7. He wants bishop to h4 to go after the rooks uh, and now rook to e4 attacking the queen. Uh, basically saying that if you play queen to d1 uh, then it's uh, it's just a draw. Uh, but luckily for Spassky, Fisher was not interested in a draw against Spassky. For example, queen d1 check rook f1, we're gonna play queen captures on c2, and now rook g4, and the rook cannot move, so how do you defend? Well, rook to g8, and now we would see a trade, captures, captures, and queen b8 check, and now you will have a repetition via this triangle here, uh, rook g8, queen to e5 check, rook g7, queen to g8 check, rook g7, and so on, queen to e5 check will be a uh, uh, a draw by trifle repetition or a perpetual or whatnot. So here queen to g5 was played, now Bobby offers a queen trade because he is up a pawn, if the queens get traded that would be, uh, well, that, that would be good for him, and plus, not only is he up a pawn, he has a bishop against a knight, would play on both sides of the board, he would he would be, he would be better here. So after queen to g5, we have queen to d4, Spassky has to keep uh, chances alive, he has to keep the material on the board, uh, and now Fisher has to find the move. And again, he can play b6, something like b5, he can play rook, uh, rook c to g8, that's also a move, uh, but he goes for the kill, he plays rook to f8, and that will simply not do. He wants to remove one of the defenders 
defenders of the g2 square uh, but now the position is completely winning for Spassky uh, but it, it's very interesting how it happens so feel free to pause the video and win this game for for Spassky while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on, on spotting this, uh, well, brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, maneuver. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to e5. And all of a sudden, you realize that the queen cannot keep defending the bishop. The queen covers h4, uh, the rook covers the f6 square. So you really don't have a square for the queen to keep an eye on the bishop on e7. So uh, if you play queen g4, we're just going to trade, captures, captures, and we pick up the bishop, we're up a piece. So Bobby tries the only thing that's left, uh, and that is to go after Spassky's queen with rook to d8. Now he says, all right, you capture my queen, I'm going to capture your queen. But now Spassky plays queen to e4, and the queen is still hanging, and the bishop is attacked twice by the rook and by the queen. So Bobby plays the only thing that's left, queen to h4, now says, all right, my bishop is sufficient defended uh, and uh, we are now again uh, in this uh, uh, position where a queen trade is offered but uh, rook to f4 by Spassky and it is uh, now in this position on move 29 that Bobby Fischer resigned the game as there is nothing to be done. Uh, all of the squares have been taken from the black queen you have to move the queen somewhere and after you move the queen we're just gonna gobble up the the, the bishop and that's it uh, Bobby's down a piece and of course he resigns here so this is just uh, incredible and uh, you might think okay uh, well of course Spassky won this is a 17 year old Fisher uh, who okay he he qualified for, for the candidates tournament last year but still it's a 17 year old Bobby Fisher uh, but if you look at the actual standings uh, after the tournament and uh, let me just check I don't know if I prepared them yeah i didn't uh, give me give me a few seconds uh, i will prepare them uh and also yeah wh while we're here let me just show you guys this uh this is a nice one uh it's uh, from the uh, website of friedrich Olafsson. uh these are the the participants of the of the 1960 Mardel plata tournament so you guys can enjoy this uh, while i'm uh, preparing the standings uh, let me just enlarge this a little bit for you you can see and also try and try and see how many uh, players can you spot of course <laughs> you can see uh, Fisher and Spassky there in the front row sitting you can see Fisher with the biggest smile ever on his face and Spassky not all that impressed uh, that is being here that's Bronstein next uh, next to Fisher that's Olafsson next to Spassky so try and figure out how many of these players you know while I uh, <laughs> while I prepare the standings All right, so the standings have been prepared. Uh, let's just uh, enjoy that uh, for a little bit more. There we go. Uh, now let's check out the standings. Uh, here they are. Uh, now these are the standings of the 1960 Mario Plata tournament. Uh, look at this. Uh, Spassky, uh, 13 and a half out of 15. Fisher, 13 and a half out of 15. So it doesn't really matter that Fisher was 17. Uh, he completely crushed the tournament, and uh, if, if it weren't for this loss against uh, Spassky, then it would be a, 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 a very one-sided event. Uh, th this way it was called a two-horse race, but as you can see, uh, both Spassky and Fischer uh, full two points ahead of David Bronstein. And uh, interestingly, uh, Bobby Fischer only lost to Spassky this game, and he drew uh, his game to Bronstein, so this is his second draw um, uh, against Bronstein, and he then won 13 games. Um, uh, all together. So he has more wins than Spassky, but he had a loss against Spassky, so uh, they, they shared first place. In those days, they're, they're, you didn't have tie breaks, they, they, they just had a shared first place. So you can see uh, how um, how strong Bobby was here, but still Spassky completely <laughs> demolished him in this uh, King's Gambit uh, in the first game they ever played. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, very happy that uh, Spassky is doing well. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Franco Tonello and I would like to thank me for the best chess videos, Andre Teron, uh, Nagarjuna Pungotti and the GM Socks Rocks for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world.
Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and always play the King's Gambit.